It's Ideasphere with cultural economist Saeed Dalabani. Mimonomics, the next generation economic system. The knowledge economy represents one of the greatest disruptive changes that the capitalist system has ever seen. Because of its very nature, it is shifting economic and political models from one that are made up of hierarchy, power, and resource manipulation to one that are functional and based on distributed intelligence models. It's no secret that today we're dealing with a great political divide. It threatens many of our democratic institutions. Right and left ideologies have become polarized camps that seem to be worlds apart. Hello, I'm Guy Rothbun. Welcome to Ideasphere, a platform for today's voices with Saeed Dalabani. Mimonomics, the next generation economic system. It's claimed that Albert Einstein once said, we can't solve problems by using the same kind of thinking we used when we created them. In his book, Dalabani reframes the issues of competing economic and political ideologies and places them into an evolutionary new paradigm. This is the book that's now being called The Next Big Think. Mr. Dalabani on the line with me. Thanks for joining the show. Thank you, Guy, for having me on your show. It's a pleasure to be with you. I'm so pleased that we have had a chance to link up on this book. I've heard it referred to now as The Next Big Think. And it indeed is. It takes economics and our culture and essentially turns it on its ear from everything we've believed in the past. Yes, well, that's when I first started developing this concept of memonomics, I came to it from a completely different perspective than most economists do. And that is the perspective of how does economics affect cultural evolution? And that's really what the framework of memonomics is all about. It takes economic activity economic policies, and all pretty much economic philosophies, and places them into an evolutionary context, so it will give us a better understanding of how cultural values emerge, and what the meaning of capitalism and economic activity is as a big picture, not just based on quarterly returns, or where the market closed today, or uh, you know the effects of a, of a political speech, and so on. So it takes more of a long-term view of how ideologies, how economic philosophy affects cultural emergence. Emergence, that's a key word you borrowed from one of your mentors, Graves, yeah. and the value system that is designed around this. Yes, yeah. Professor Graves originally pioneered the concept of value systems. Value systems is a framework that was originally developed by uh, Dr. Graves at uh, Union College in, in New York back in the 60s. And it basically, at one point, was called the theory that explains everything. A little ambitious in its reach, but it explains quite a bit. And in it, Dr. Graves hypothesized that culture emerges in love and that there is a pairing of emergence, that human intelligence emerges in concert with society, with culture, that we call this in the framework the adaptive intelligence within the human and then the life conditions emerging from culture. So as life conditions affect humans, they trigger the individual to emerge into higher levels of existence. Through the framework, uh, Graves uncovered a total of eight value systems that we can belong to. And basically what a value system is, we've all heard of memes, units of cultural DNA that, that replicate across uh, wide segments of society. Well, those value systems are made up of bigger categories of memes, things like fashion, music, sports, religion, and of course economics. So when these general category memes come together, they form a value system that comes to define a culture. Now, each value system has its own unique sort of indigenous content. So by knowing a culture's priorities and preferences based on this approach, we can design far more effective measures of economic sustainability. 
The best example of this, and this is, again, this is a big picture view of economic values, well, you can tell the difference between how we here in the States approach economic policy differently than the EU approaches. We approach our values from what we call the fifth level system. Uh, we are more concerned with things like uh, balanced budgets, tax policy, accountability, trying to get government to be more responsive to, especially recently, activities of banks and, and on Wall Street. While if you, if you compare that to how the EU perceives things, the EU focuses on social programs and equality. You know, these are two different expressions of value systems. Our value system is from the fifth level of values. The European value system is from the sixth level of values. We are more into the strategic and scientific approach. The Europeans are more into the egalitarian and the human approach, which, based on this construct, is a, is a higher level of values that we're beginning to emerge into now. What we should do is establish what the levels are. For right. someone yeah. listening, the sixth level isn't the highest level, and you comment that the Europeans are establishing the egalitarian approach to economics. There are two tiers above that. Right. So let me uh, briefly, this is quite a complex theory that Graves put together, but I'm going to try to make it as simple okay. as possible. It took, it took really over four decades of research for him to put this framework together. But basically, the, uh, there are eight known levels of human existence. You know, Graves was a contemporary of Abraham Maslow, of hierarchy of, of needs fame. However, Graves' theory differed slightly from Maslow's in the sense that the self-realization stage occurs at every level in the Graves model, as opposed to just one utopian place that's frozen in time. Mm -hmm. So the first level is the survival value. And economics, there's not much of an economic system at that level. The second level is the tribalistic and agrarian level. With economics, it's a simple trade, it's low-tech, low-volume manufacturing, those types of things. Now, today, that level accounts for about 3% of the global GDP. The third level is the egocentric and heroic level of value. It's dominant in cultures like uh, most OPEC countries, where, where more than 50% of uh, a country's GDP is derived from natural resources. The U.S. transitioned through that level differently earlier between uh, the time of the end of the Civil War to about the middle of the Great Depression. Now, that value system, that third level of heroic values where economy is developed by one person declaring this is how it should be developed. That level of, of ecocentric values contributes about 7 or 8% to global GDP today. The fourth level, okay, and this is where the values of the one true way are the dominant value of the culture. This is pretty much central planning and production. We went through this here in the States as we entered World War II we still have remnants of those values, and they've stayed with us uh, pretty much throughout the 70s. Today, the economy that's based on central command and control is the economy of China. There are a few other countries that still base their economies on central planning, but really, in total, uh, China claims the lion's share of central planning today. And that value system accounts for about 15% of the total global GDP today. The fifth level which the U.S. is in today, and some parts of Europe, like the U.K., definitely Japan is in that system, that level accounts for about 50 to 60 percent of global GDP. And this is where most of our work is focused. We look at how to make the system healthier and in order to help it move to higher values along the spiral of values. Now, the sixth level, features egalitarian economic values. This places the human bond over the bottom line. It is where the EU is today. We're also seeing it in the US today as we go through the infancy stages of the knowledge economy. It is a powerful transition that capitalism must go through in order for it to understand its real purpose. Today, it represents about 10 to 12 percent of total global GDP. Now, what's noteworthy here, guys, is that when a culture enters a new level, 
okay? It includes all the past levels in it. So I've gotten resistance from the mainstream economists with my framework. Uh, yes, I would expect that. Yes, and, and in their thinking, they believe that if we embrace the egalitarian values, that we're going to become a socialist economy, or that we're going to give up the virtues of capitalism. Well, based on this model, that's not the case at all. We transcend and include the levels before us. As we transition to the egalitarian and humanitarian values, we are including the strategic enterprising values of the fifth level system, but they no longer define our lives. We move to higher values where the lower values are included in it, but they are representative of smaller parts of what defines our value systems. Okay, so what I've described so far, Guy, are the six levels that form the first tier of the spiral. There are two remaining levels, and what Mimonomics and my book describe is an economy that is designed from the seventh level, from the big picture, big view, process-oriented type of values. That's a completely different ballgame for capitalism than the one we've seen so far. The eighth level, we're, we're a few hundred years away from that, so we won't even uh, talk about that. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> <laughs> That's a system that if you've seen any of the Star Trek movies or any of the science fiction movies where there is no exchange, there is no need for money, and society operates as a uh, spaceship Earth type of value, that's when you begin to see all of us contributing to preserving the, the, the precious values on a planet with peril. So the first level, the first six levels, is what our framework calls the values of subsistence. The next two levels, which is the seventh and eighth level, as I said, they paint the big picture view. Mm -hmm. the, the seventh level of economic values begins to emerge after we sort of achieved you know, great personal success and after we've gone through the humanitarian system that wants to distribute resources to all. So the seventh level system is a functional system that harnesses the best of all the six systems that came before it. It's really beholden, it makes all the lower systems beholden to a far bigger picture of themselves. This is what I call uh, functional capitalism in my book. For those just tuning in, Mimonomics is the title of the book, The Next Generation Economic System. Author Saeed Dalabani, you have a website or blog, anything else you would recommend? My website is Mimonomics.com. It has a blog on it that goes back to maybe uh, five or six years ago. Uh, it picks up from the time that we began the financial crisis and, and analyzes the, the value systems that led to the crisis. And it is really a unique view on how the science of value systems perceives economic activity, and especially the current expression of capitalism that is financial innovation. So, Excellent. yeah, there's a lot of resources that people can uh, find on the website, blog, more information about the book, speaking engagements, and so forth. Great. I want to get into the future of capitalism in just a moment. Before we do, though, one of the things that got my attention that you wrote in your book, and of course a lot of things did, but you write that when a person or culture solves the problems of existence within their value system, they immediately create the problems that will trigger the emergence of the next value system. Very yeah. interesting. Yeah. So all the dysfunction that we're experiencing today in, uh, in culture, Guy, and that includes what's happening around the world, like, like what's happening with the Arab Spring, what's happening with the Occupy movement, with all the displeasure that we have with the current system. What caused that is our emergence into the values that the Internet is creating. Really, the driving force from the value system's perspective behind the Internet is the democratization of information. So as we began to leave the values of the industrial age behind, we emerged into the values that sought the, the equal distribution, the democratic distribution of information and resources. And because of that value system beginning to reach a, a tipping point, we're beginning to see the problems that it's creating. The old system can no longer cope with the problems that the new system is creating. 
you can no longer contain people in a culture that has been repressed under autocratic and dictatorship regimes because of the spread of information. You can no longer get away with corrupt practices, be it in government, be it on Wall Street, be it at banks or at the workplace, because of the advent of the Internet, because of these new disruptive tools that are a part of that new egalitarian value system. It really is leveling the playing field in an area that would have not been possible or conceivable just uh, maybe uh, two, two decades ago. Uh, so we're beginning to see those values, and the old system is not capable of regulating it. So we need to create a system that knows how to deal with the current system. So the current system of values that are, were brought on by the Internet need a whole different set of metrics to be, to be managed in order for the problems of emergence to be addressed properly. Talking with cultural economist Saeed Dalabani, Memonomics, the Next Generation Economic System. This is Ideasphere, a platform for today's voices. I'm Guy Rathbun. We'll be right back.